Landon Brown, what's good? Nothing much. What's good with you? Thank you for coming in. Thank you so, for having me. So, for those that don't know, you're Bobby Brown's oldest son. Right. Okay. Now, how, was Bob, uh, how old was Bobby when he had you? 17. 17. Mm -hmm. So, if you could just, you know, help me uh, with the timeline. How old was Bobby when he left New Edition? Hmm. How old was my father when he left New Edition? It's a good question. It was Before around was that born, age. When I was born, he put out his first album. His first solo album. First solo album, yeah. Okay. So maybe a little before I was born. Okay. It's not a big topic in my family. We don't we don't discuss it all the time. No, I got you. <laughs> and, and Bobby's uh, first album was a monster. Yeah. But that's that's don't be cruel. Well, his first album was actually King of Stage. Um, Oh, okay. My, my bad. Right. Don't well, be cruel. Was, don't the be cruel was the big one. Was the yeah. big one. Was the big one. Okay. Okay. So right. it was King of Stage. King of Stage and Don't Be Cruel. Okay. Don't Be Cruel. That was the monster. That mm -hmm. was like my prerogative, Tenderoni, Rock yeah. with You. It was hit after hit after hit. Yeah. I mean, from from what your dad told you, why why did he end up leaving New Edition? Um. I mean, over the years, from from when I was a kid to now. It's always been a variation of the story, but it wasn't always something that we touched on. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, amongst New Edition, they, you know, they voted him out. Yeah. From my dad's perspective, he knew he could fly on his own. Which he did. Mm -hmm. Yeah, he did that. Yeah, I mean, you, you could almost, I mean, could you say that the Don't Be Cruel album surpassed what New Edition did as a group? I wouldn't. I wouldn't compare the two. I would say it's apples and oranges. Okay. I would say they had an amazing thing, and then my father, bam, had a whole different, amazing thing. Yeah. I mean, uh, comparing a group to a solo artist in the first well, place. I meant sales, awards. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well. Cause, yeah, because I mean, I remember when "Don't Be Cruel" came out. I think I was still in high school at the time. Um, it was like song of the year, record of the year, this of the year, it was yeah. all over the radio. It was it was a monster. I mean, from from my childhood, Bobby Brown definitely had a bigger impact as a solo artist mm -hmm. than New Edition as a group. But that was also based on the kind of music I liked. You know, Bobby had more of an edge to him. He was a little more hip hop, yeah. I felt. He was meant to do his own thing. He was. Yeah. He was. New Edition is amazing as a, as a group. And my father was meant to his thing. So what was it like growing up in this type of environment? Your dad is a superstar. Uh, growing up in this type of environment, um, it can be fun. I mean, it could be like anyone's life, just just that that extra outline of, whoa, like this is a lot sometimes, you know. Okay. Now, uh, your mom and, and your dad, were they officially together or? They were in a relationship for a while and yeah. and then they sp split their separate ways. Okay, how old were you when they ended up splitting? Mm, two, three. Okay, you were still a baby. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, did you see your dad a lot during the younger years? Oh yeah. He came to pick me up all the time, take me around the world. We spent um, my seventh birthday in Japan and uh, a few of my birthdays in Atlanta, where he had the Ninja Turtles show up, and that was pretty cool when I was a kid. Okay. Um, we spent plenty of time and plenty of times in different countries. So, being being a little kid, it's your dad. You know, you don't have any other dads. This is all you know. But you know, I've talked to a lot of you know celebrity kids, you know, kids of celebrities. And they always tell me about the time they start to sort of figure out that their dad is a little different than all the other dads. Like their dad is, you know, people go crazy and stuff like that. And what, you know, when they go out, like at what point did you realize, okay, my dad is kind of a big deal here, you know, in terms of the world? Um, it's a good question. I feel like there was a, there was a bunch of small, small things that happened in and out of my life that that let me know how heavy the situation was. You know, yeah. you like, you see people give your dad attention, you're like, oh, he's a really cool guy. Yeah. You know, but then when you see teachers and they're like, you know, 
can you give your dad this? And you're like, why? <laughs> <laughs> you know? it's like Meaning like their like phone that, number? Like, yeah, like. But your teachers try to slip your oh, dad man. their phone number. Yeah, man, just, you know, just. So I guess they're about the same age, right? Just here you go, just, you know, just, just give it to them. I don't know. Did you actually open up the, the yeah, notes? Yeah, no, of course I did. Because it made no sense. It's like, why am I gonna, I'm not going to give this to my dad. This is stupid. But And you open it up and it was your teacher's phone number. Yes. How did you feel when that happened? Um, I mean, I was a little boy. I wasn't, I wasn't big into, into girls, you know. It was like, I was really young when that happened. So okay. to me, it was just weird. Like, why would he call you? This is weird. <laughs> the principal should be asking for his information, not, not you giving him your personal number. Yeah. So it's things like that. Um, seeing him on the news, that was like, oh wow, this is serious. This is really real. Mm-hmm. Like, well, why is it so? I mean, people people go to jail all the time, I think. So why is it so crazy when he does? And and all them people are like trying to feed me information, this, this, and that. So that'll that'll for sure open your eyes to he's not like everyone else. Yeah. As a child. What do you think? You know, as a kid, some of your greatest experiences with your dad, experiencing, Mm. you know, him being a superstar. Um, When he spends time with the band before a show. When he spends time with the band before a show, everyone is laughing and joking and they're being silly. And we one time we're with the band before a show and he bust open a coconut and was like, taste this. This is delicious. And now it's like all the rage now, coconut water, mm-hmm. right? And um, we go to a restaurant, all of us. The show's over, the night's not over. We go to a restaurant and the table is full of food and we just have a good time, you know? He's always fun, always life of the party. Yeah. What was it like seeing him perform and, and seeing, seeing the reaction from the crowds? Mm. When you're a little boy, and you're watching the crowd, you're not really watching the crowd. The crowd is not even, like, they're just, it's a bunch of people. You're not even looking at that, you know. Sometimes they catch your eye, like, wow, like that's, this is exciting. But the most of what you're doing is, is watching how he's doing what he's doing. Yeah. Trying to figure out how you can do that. Okay. Because it's so cool. You know, it's not the lights, it's not the cameras, it's not the people, it's not the fame. You just feel like this is something he's good at, and you want to be good at it, too. So you wanted to emulate your dad? Yeah, yeah, I did. Okay, and when did you start like singing yourself? Um, I, mean, I started singing in middle school, but I, w- I really wasn't feeling myself. I was, I just, I felt this apprehension of, I'm not sure if I can do this. So I was a kid. Everyone wanted me to box. Everyone wanted me to be a track star. Everyone wanted me to be this, this, motivational speaker you know I always want to uplift people and make them happy and singing made me happy writing music made me happy but I just I wasn't feeling myself when I was a kid okay now did your dad try to help you at all with that part yeah my dad my dad would always tell me this is this is what you're meant to do this is for Mm -hmm. you this is your life you were born into this we one time had a conversation with Ron Harper um, and he was like, your dad paved the way for you to do your own thing. He can't do this for you. Yeah. He made the way, now it's up to you. Mm-hmm. And it's conversations like that, that um, when you're young, you feel like they're right, they're right. I have to build up this confidence within myself and, and I have to do it. As a kid, it's hard to have that kind of sure. that kind of confidence. You know, if you haven't already been been through some things like my father was in New Edition, I mean, he just flew. Yeah. So for me, I'm running track and field. Everybody's like, run, Landon. You know, so music. But you, you grow into it. You get it. You learn it. It's not something to do for, for everyone. It's something you do because you love to do it. Absolutely. Now, your dad and your mom split up and you were still fairly young. Mm. What was their relationship like as, as you started to get older? <laughs> they were friends. They were friends. My mom got it. My dad got it, you know, and, and I guess they understood that the co-parenting was better than not co-parenting. Right, being at know? odds. Having, having a good friendship if you can't have a good relationship. Right. So when we'd all hang out together, it'd just be jokes and laughs, you know, and just it'd be a good time. 
And your dad would help out financially and everything else like that? You know, when I was a kid, I didn't know anything about that. Right. But when you look back on it now? When you're a child, like when you were a child, like did yeah. you know your parents were paying all these bills? No idea. I had no idea. Yeah. <laughs> I didn't know what they were paying for. I thought everything just kind of like appeared. <laughs> like, oh, you grew this food. Um, but, I, yeah, I mean, when he would come into town, he would take me shopping, take me to get all the toys. Nintendo, don't start me on Nintendo. Right. Got me all the Nintendo games, you know, because he, I feel that maybe in his heart he felt if he can't be with his son 24-7, he's got to do something for him. Yeah. So he would come and spend as much quality time as he could and then fill up the rest of it with gifts. Yeah. And I appreciate that because at least that's trying. Yeah. So at one point, your dad uh, got with Whitney. Mm. How old were you at the time? Mm, I think I was six. Oh, young. I think I was six or seven when, no, I, man, I think I was six. I was a little boy and we wore all white. Um, I wish I had a picture of what we were wearing. We looked, we looked crazy. Me and my cousin Gary, uh, Whitney's nephew, we, uh, we were little kids. But I think around six. Okay. I could be wrong. Did you know who Whitney Houston was at the time? No, man. None of this made sense to me. When you, when you live outside of it, <clears throat> for instance, tables are turned. I don't know what your father did. Mm -hmm. But if he was a great man to people, all I get from that is, wow, that guy? That's who everyone's talking about? That guy? So you grow up with that. So the people that I knew outside of my father's family were like, wow. But for me, it's, why? Like, wow, I don't, I don't get it. Yeah, he's awesome. I just don't get it. Okay. So when you grow up inside of it, it's inside of it. You don't right. even get the shine. You get the, the core. Yeah. The genuine, the loving, the generous person. You get to see that. But once, once he got with Whitney, uh -huh. it went to a whole different level because your dad was a superstar on his own and Whitney was like the biggest female artist like in the world yeah. at the time. So power, power. And, and a lot of money to go along with it. True, 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 true. Yeah. But at the same time, again, no idea. Okay. I'm a kid. The money doesn't make sense to me. Right. But six years old... Yeah. Bobby and Whitney are together mm. for a long time, so now you're getting older. Mm. At what point did you start to really kind of realize how big of a marriage this really was? Uh, middle school. Okay. Middle school. Um, middle school, I went to go live with them for a while, and I don't know, it just was like a really big deal to people. <laughs> 